When we are doing a research, let's understand whether we have to follow a deductive approach or we have to go forward with an inductive approach. So what is deductive versus inductive? We have a very simple technique for you to understand and a simple mnemonic which is ISG. ISG implies inductive approach moves from specific to general and since inductive is specific to general, you can understand that the deductive approach would be from general to specific. Specific. Now, where do we use inductive approach and where do we use deductive approach? We would understand certain examples in a while, but just to have an outline of the concept, inductive approach, it starts with I and it is used for interpretative analysis or interpretative approach. What does that mean? When uh, there is a concept which is too much theoretical, we could say, what we use is a inductive approach. So in, under inductive approach usually field work observations case studies are part of it and it is much more open-ended you have lot of chances of exploration because you are moving from specific specific things and you are trying to go towards a general theory however when we talk about positivist approach it is it is deductive in nature now this positivist approach what do we mean uh, we would we have covered the positivist post positivist interpretativism in a separate lecture again but just to have an idea the things which are very very we could say scientific which could be proved scientifically and which are very very objective unbiased would be part of the positivist approach so here what we do is we move from general to specific that means our study is scientific, it is objective, it is unbiased and we are moving from testing hypothesis to understanding the research. Now we have two premises as we have seen and then a conclusion. So what happens in a deductive approach is you have premise 1 and premise 2. One of these premises would be a general premise, the other could be a specific premise and then your conclusion would be a specific conclusion. So therefore we say we are moving from general to specific. So we are trying to narrow down the idea of research and and bring a research under a much more simpler much more easier format now we have a very simple example to understand this is an era of internet all of us use internet so we have a person who is old and a person who is young so this old person is named as ABC the young person is named as XYZ now I have premise one that the people who are old or aged are not well familiar with internet so this is my first premise this is a general premise about all aged people who are not doing good or not very well versed with internet my second premise is person abc here is let's say 70 years now my conclusion is that xyz is much well versed okay much well versed as compared to abc what does it mean it means my con this premise was a general premise. My second premise was a specific premise about this person. And the conclusion is again a specific comparing XYZ with ABC and saying that XYZ is young and therefore is better versed with internet as compared to ABC. Now this is what I'm moving from a deductive approach to a, uh, I'm moving from general to a specific aspect and therefore it is a deductive approach so this is an example of deductive approach with the same format that we have here let's understand the idea for a inductive approach now for the inductive approach i say abc and his friends all who are above 60 70 years that we considered are not users of internet okay so or uh, abc himself who is 70 plus is not a user of internet or not well versed with internet friends of abc who are 70 plus are also not users of internet now these are two of the premises that i have which are specific about ABC and his friends. But with this, I can bring up a conclusion which is a generalized conclusion saying that all people who are 70 plus are not well versed with using internet. Now this is what? I'm moving from the specific premises to a general conclusion and therefore it is specific to general and we say this is an inductive approach. So with the same scenario, we understood how we come to a, how we have a deductive approach or a 
इंडक्टिव अप्रोच सो वेन एवर यू आर डूइंग योर रिसर्च यू आर प्रोसीडिंग विद योर रिसर्च यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट काइंड ऑफ स्टडीज यू वुड टेक इन टू अकाउंट एंड बेस्ड ऑन दैट यू वुड डिसाइड वेदर इट वुड बी अ इंडक्टिव अप्रोच और अ डिडक्टिव अप्रोच दैट यू वुड बी यूजिंग वाइल डूइंग द रिसर्च नाउ लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड बोथ ऑफ दीज वन बाय वन विथ certain examples so my first example is with the inductive approach now i have my friend monkey here he makes certain observation he sees a apple falling he sees some of the banana falling some of the papayas falling now this is what this is an observation so in the under a uh, inductive approach we start with observation and then we move towards a theory building as i said inductive you have specific to general so this is the observation that he did now with this observation what is the pattern he understood he understood a pattern and that pattern was what that pattern was falling down so he says that everything is falling down and that's the pattern he was able to understand with this pattern he laid down a hypothesis what was this hypothesis everything falls down due to gravity and that is his hypothesis and finally he builds up a theory and what is his theory his theory is the theory of gravitation and this is how we move from a specific to a general now with the same example deductive approach could come under two ways once you have something that has been established from a specific fact and generalized let's say in this example now we have the theory of gravitation that is generalized now this generalized theory could be applied to other cases and that would be your example of what that would be your example of deductive approach but in certain scenarios there could be a scenario where there was no prior specific to general movement that was seen that means there was no inductive knowledge that was applied prior and directly there was a uh, deductive approach that was applied so right now we would understand how we move from a generalized concept to a specific concept with the same example of theory of gravitation before that remember this under a inductive approach we move from observation we have certain patterns theory uh, hypothesis and finally the theory building now coming on to the deductive approach it starts with a theory now theory we already know is what it is the theory of gravitation that we would be discussing now from this theory of gravitation a hypothesis has been propounded but this hypothesis is not the same hypothesis that we said previously from the same concept of the theory of gravitation we are having a different hypothesis that says moon revolves around the earth due to gravity otherwise it would fly off so it maintains this orbit why it maintains this orbit because of the gravity now what was the observation that was done the observation was the path of the moon and the forces on the moon so what path the moon is following and what are the forces that are applicable on moon which are helping it to maintain or to remain in the orbit so that is the observation that was done and finally what was the confirmation that was laid down the confirmation that was laid down was moon revolves because the force of gravity equates with the centrifugal force and therefore it does not al uh, allow the moon to fly off the orbit and that is how we understand a deductive approach now as we said this deductive approach was evolved from where this deductive approach evolved from the uh, initial inductive approach where we said we have a specific to general movement and here we have a movement which is general to specific we have the theory that we understood and from that theory we are talking about the specific things now coming up to a separate example a totally different example which did not had a inductive approach that was applied prior to it so let's say we have the theory of relativity with us now with this theory of relativity einstein gave a hypothesis which was e is equal to mc square now what was the observation that was laid the observation was laid in the cases of nuclear reactors and finally what was the confirmation that was laid down the confirmation that was laid down is the mass is converted into energy in the nuclear reactors now this theory of re relativity started directly on the pen there was no inductive approach that was seen prior to it so understood the idea where we have a case where we evolved the deductive approach initially from a inductive approach 
and a separate scenario where there was no inductive approach prior to it and directly we had the theory that came up just for example it was the theory of relativity now understanding a very quick summary of it when we use a deductive approach what do we actually understand we understand that we are trying to deduce the hypothesis then we formulate the hypothesis test that hypothesis examine what are the outcomes and finally lay down our uh, confirmation and if required there is modifications in the theory we can definitely move forward with those modifications if the hypothesis is not confirmed so those were some of the key aspects that we understood under the inductive approach and the deductive approach let's repeat again a quick summary deductive approach is used for positivist theories positivist approach inductive is used in interpretative approach so it's used in field observation field studies observation cases studies however positivist approach where we use deductive approach is used is much more scientific it's much more objective and much more unbiased so that was a basic difference between the two and we would be coming up with many more such interesting concepts in the upcoming sessions so stay tuned for many more updates from our side have a wonderful day ahead